Now, let's move on to the topic. Today's topic is submandibular space infection. Now, what is the gist of this topic? First, the introduction, boundaries, and then you have to write the contents. What are the teeth involved in the submandibular space infection? And what are the source of this infection? The neighboring spaces of this submandibular space, the important muscle related to this submandibular space, and the clinical features of this submandibular space infection, and what are the management and complications of this submandibular space infection. Now, moving on to the introduction, what is this? The submandibular space is the primary mandibular space. As we already saw the classification, check out my previous video. And this is the space which lies between the anterior and posterior bellies of digastric muscle. Here, this is the submandibular gland and this will be the submandibular space infection. Here it will be. It is the space which lies between the anterior and posterior bellies of digastric muscle. So this will be the anterior belly of digastric and this will be the posterior belly of digastric. You just have to remember where it lies, where the submandibular space lies. That is, this space lies between the anterior belly of digastric muscle and the posterior belly of digastric muscle. It's very simple as that. You just have to write the introduction of the submandibular space. That is where this submandibular space lies. Next, we can move on to boundaries of the submandibular space infection. Look at this diagram. With this diagram, you can write this boundaries easily. It's very simple. Listen carefully. Now, anteriorly, what you can see? Anteriorly, as we said before, you can see the anterior belly of digastric. And posteriorly, you can see the posterior belly of digastric. Anteriorly what? It is anterior belly of digastric muscle. And posteriorly, it is posterior belly of digastric muscle. Medially, on the medial side, the most important muscle. Look at this picture. So, this is mylohyoid. This is mylohyoid muscle. And this is platysma. And this is the tongue. So, medially, you can see the mylohyoid muscle. Laterally, you can see platysma. Medially what? Mylohyoid muscle is in the medial side. Medially, mylohyoid. And laterally, platysma. Next, coming on to superiorly. What you can see superiorly? That is the junction between medial aspect of mandible and the mylohyoid muscle. This is the junction. The junction of the medial aspect of mandible and the mylohyoid muscle. This is the junction. So, superiorly junction of medial aspect of mandible and
myelohyoid. Inferiorly, what you can find? That is the anterior and posterior belly. Anterior and posterior belly of digastric. Look at this diagram. Anteriorly, it is the anterior belly of digastric. Posteriorly, the posterior belly of digastric. Medially, you have mylohyoid. Laterally, you have platysma. Superiorly, the junction of medial aspect of mandible and mylohyoid. And inferiorly, anterior and posterior belly of digastric. You can remember like this also. Anteriorly, and it starts with anterior, anterior belly. Posteriorly, it starts with posterior, posterior belly. Then medially, smilohyoid, MM. And laterally, platysma, L is there. So, introduction is done and boundaries is done. Now let's move on to the content. What are the contents of submandibular space? It includes the submandibular salivary gland that is this is the submandibular salivary gland. And this will be your sublingual gland. Here will be your submandibular space infection. Submandibular space. Alright. The contents include submandibular salivary gland, lymph nodes, facial artery and lingual nerve. Now, what are the teeth involved in this submandibular space infection? Mandibular molars. Mainly the second and third molar. These are the teeth involved. And then coming to the muscle related. Which is the important muscle in the sublingual and as well as the submandibular space infection is the mylohyoid. You need to remember this muscle. It is very important. Mylohyoid muscle. And this is the muscle which distinguishes the sublingual space infection and submandibular space infection. If the apex of the infected tooth is above the mylohyoid muscle, then it will be sublingual space infection. And if the apex of the tooth, infected tooth, is below the mylohyoid muscle, then it will be submandibular space infection. Now what are the source of infection? It is the infection from mandibular molars that is mainly the second and third molar region. Then the infection from submental space, the infection from the sublingual space and it may be due to pericoronitis. Now moving on to the neighboring spaces present. As we know Sublingual space, submental space, lateral pharyngeal space and the buccal space. Here will be the sublingual space and here will be the submandibular space. Sublingual and here will be the submental space. These are the neighboring spaces of submandibular space. We are done with the introduction, boundaries, content, the teeth involved, source of infection and the neighboring spaces and muscle related. Now let's move on to the clinical features of the submandibular space infection. What are the clinical features of submandibular space infection? The first and foremost important clinical feature is that Swelling in the submandibular region. It will be in the shape of inverted cone. This swelling 
will be beginning from the lower border of the mandible and to the hyoid bone. This is the important clinical feature of submandibular space infection. It will be in the shape of inverted cone. Next, you will be seeing trismus, that is restricted mouth opening. Then you have dysphagia. What is dysphagia? Yeah, it is the difficulty in swallowing. Next, you will be having tenderness and redness over those areas. And there will be mobility of teeth. Swelling in the submandibular region that will be in the shape of inverted cone. And where it extends, it starts from the lower border of the mandible till the hyoid bone. Next, you will be having trismus and then dysphagia, tenderness and redness over the area and there will be mobility of the teeth. That's it about clinical features. Now, let's move on to treatment of the submandibular space infection. I have mentioned previously the most common treatment for all these space infection is the incision and drainage. The incision is run extra orally below the lower border of mandible and then a blunt dissection is done. The rubber drain is placed and it is secured with suture and you can give the fluid replacement should be done. Next is the bed rest. These are the treatment. Now this submandibular space infection has some complications that includes Ludwig's angina, sialadenitis and lymphadenitis. Ludwig's angina is the acute toxic diffuse cellulitis form and sialadenitis it is the inflammation of salivary gland and what is lymphadenitis that is the swollen lymph nodes. These are the complications of submandibular space infection. We have discussed about interaction, boundaries, content, teeth involved, source of infection, neighboring spaces, muscle related, clinical features, management and complications of the submandibular space infection. With this gist, with this heading, you can explain the whole thing. And the important thing you should keep in mind is the boundaries. If you remember the diagram, it is very easy for you to remember the boundaries. It is simple. Now coming to the most awaited, the best tip for remembering the things in order. I have given a clue for you that is PEG. Any guesses? Yeah, it is the PEC system. It is the rhyming PEC system. It was given by Henry Hudson. It is the very effective and easy trick through which you can remember the things in the order. It is the rhyming PEG system. Now, I will tell an example for you. Suppose, imagine, if you are going to buy some things in the shop. Like if you are going for the grocery shop to buy some things, you need to get some total of 20 or 25 things. And how could you remember this in order? Or you can apply this in your studies even. If you have to remember the things in order, in the correct order, in the number, how you can use this PEC system is that. Now remember the number that is 1. Make a rhyme for that 1. Suppose if 1 is for gun. What? 1 is for gun. Alright. So with the help of the gun what you can do? You are just shooting the apples from the tree. So that you could remember the apple. The first item which is in your list that you have to buy from the shop is the apple. If you remember one, at the moment you can remember one is for gun. So you are taking out the gun and shooting at the apple in the tree. 
the first list what you have to get is the apple now for suppose uh, the second item that is two you can keep the rhyme as shoe so you have a shoe in the color of purple you could remember purple you have the beetroot that is which is in purple color so if you remember two you know that your second thing in your list is the beetroot the third thing in your list is the green pea how you will remember this now the tree number three you make a rhyme as tree you have the tree the tree is in green color so something you are going to get in green color that is green peas the third thing is the green peas in your list that's it about tech system guys so this is the easiest trick so that you could remember the things in number just try it out and let me know in the comment section that's it for today's video i'll see you all with the another best tip or the best trick to study faster in the another video thank you for watching my video if you like the video hit the like button share this video and subscribe to my channel thank you for watching thank you